Some time ago, I wanted to experiment with 3D printing nylon filament, but nylon is extremely susceptible to humidity. Ideally, it is fed directly out of a dry box and through a reverse Bowden tube directly into the extruder. I already had plastic weatherproof file boxes with silica gel beads that work well, but I needed a feed through. I've seen many DIY approaches using a spare pneumatic coupling for that purpose, but that seems just a little fragile and the pneumatic couplings can be a bit of a pain. So I decided to design and print my own feed through. Not only would that give me more exactly what I needed, but given that I have a 3D printer and a CAD program, it just seems wrong to run out to the hardware store every time I want to try something new. Ultimately, my design took the form of a bolt with a through hole for some spare PTFE tube to pass through, with a compression fitting to lock it into place. In this video, I'll share that design with you and introduce you to the Thread Profile Workbench. While the fastener workbench is often easier to work with, the Thread Profile Workbench offers better customization. Since 3D printed tolerance is inevitably looser than machined metal, the ability to add more clearance in the threads through customization is a real plus. Before we start, if you don't already have it, go to the Add-on Manager in FreeCAD and add the Thread Profile Workbench. As usual, you'll need to restart FreeCAD in order to complete the installation. Now on to the design. Start as usual in the Part Workbench and create a sketch on the XY plane. Create a circle on the origin and set the diameter to 14 millimeters. This will be the head of our pass-through bolt. Extrude that to 10 millimeters. Now create another sketch on the XY plane. Set to Views Cross-Section and bring in the cylinder as external geometry. Now create a smaller circle with the center constrained to the circumference of the cylinder and further constrained to the x-axis. Constrain the diameter to 2 mm. Now extrude to 10 mm. Select the extrude and use the polar array from the draft workbench with 5 instances. Now we have finger grips on the head. But it's not much of a bolt without a thread. So go to the Thread Profile Workbench. The first step in the Thread Profile Workflow is to select a thread profile. You'll almost always want the first option, the V-thread. The other options are a buttress thread or a bottle thread. Now select the thread profile and set the parameters in the data pane. I'm going to set the height to 15 millimeters. Going down to presets, select the M10 coarse 1.5 millimeter thread. With the profile still selected, click on the helix tool to create a helix for building the thread. Control select the helix and click the sweep tool to complete the thread. The thread is created, but it's currently resting on the XY plane and we actually wanted it on top of the cylinder. So return to the Part Workbench, and with the sweep selected, go to Part Attachment. Zoom in a little bit so I can see it properly, and I'll select the top of the cylinder. The mode is XY on plane. Much better. I want a threaded hole on the bottom of my pass-through that I can use to screw in an extension piece on the inside of the dry box keep things consistent, that's also going to be an M10 coarse 1.5 millimeter thread. So back to the thread profile. Again, we create a profile. Make it 5 millimeters deep. In this case, set it as internal thread and 10 millimeters coarse 1.5. As before, create the helix and add the helix to the selection. Create the sweep, and this results in a tool that we can use as a Boolean cut to make our threaded hole. Now to put some of these pieces together before it gets too confusing. Select the first extrude, the array, 
and the first sweep, which is the thread of the bowl. Go to the part workbench and fuse them all together. Now select the fusion, the second sweep, and cut, giving us our threaded hole. We're getting there, but it's not yet complete. Create one more sketch on the XY plane. Create a circle at the origin and set the diameter to 5 millimeters. Now extrude it to 50 millimeters. All we need is for it to be long enough to cut through the whole bolt. Select the cut, select the new extrude, and cut again to form the through hole. Just to keep everything clear, I'm going to rename the through hole cutting tool to through hole and the sketch that created it to through hole sketch. I'm also going to name the constraint in the sketch to through hole diameter just in case I want to reference it later. Now for a seat at the top for the compression washer. This is just going to be a conical cutout that the washer will be pressed into in order to capture the PTFE tube inserted through the bolt. Select the through hole sketch and create a sub-object shape binder. Now select the binder and in the data pane set position.z to 22 millimeters. The head is 10 millimeters and the thread is 15 millimeters. So this will give us a 3 mm deep conical cutout to seat the compression washer. Now I'm going to select the top of the bolt and create a sketch on it in plain face attachment mode. Create a circle on the origin and set its diameter to 9 mm. Now create a loft. Add in the binder and the new sketch. Create a solid and OK that. Now select the bolt, then the loft, and cut. Now that I can see it, the top is cut a little bit too wide and might tend to weaken the top of the thread. Not a problem, just reopen the sketch and change the diameter from 9mm to 7mm and close. That looks better. Just to keep everything clear, I'm going to hide the shape binder and I'm going to rename the top level cut to pass through bolt. Thinking about it further, I'd like the threaded hole at the bottom of the bolt to be a little deeper. Five millimeters of plastic is a bit excessive for the required strength. Two is more like it, so the hole should be eight millimeters deep. This would seem to be easy enough. Just go to the thread profile. Change the height to 8 millimeters, and the sweep goes into error immediately. This is a bit of a flaw with the thread profile workbench. More infuriating, even if you go back and change the thread profile back to 5 millimeters high, the sweep will remain in error. I have not found anything that can get it out of the error condition once this happens, other than reconstructing it. We can select the V-thread profile and the helix and once again click the sweep button to create a new sweep of the correct size. Of course this leaves us with the other problem that by this point we've done several cuts and fusions and other pieces and parts have become dependent on it. Undoing all of that to put a new sweep in would be pretty extreme. Fortunately we can just select the cut that used the thread we created and in the data pane under Tool, click the three dots. Now we place the old sweep with the new one, very neat and clean. Looking in the model tree, you can see the replacement has happened and we can go ahead and delete the old sweep. It'll never come out of error again anyway. Stop the presses, this just in. Looking through the Git repository, it looks like there's been some remedial action taken on the thread profile with regard to changing the height. I've been using that version in my demonstration. Going to a new project for testing. In the Thread Profile Workbench, create a thread profile default 10 millimeters high. Choose a 10.5 coarse threaded. Create the helix, do the sweep, and there's our thread.
Select the thread profile. Change the height to 15 millimeters. Click off of it to let it refresh and everything's fine. So it appears that it often works, but for some reason it doesn't work in the more complex case, possibly because it's already part of some other operations. In conclusion, there's probably a little bit more bug fixing to do somewhere. You may or may not see this problem in your design, but if you do, now you know the workaround. And if you don't, that's great. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. The final issue for the pass-through bolt is printability. Clearly in most aspects, standing on the head will be the correct orientation for printing. The only big concern is the bridge over the threaded hole in the head. It's only a 12 millimeter bridge, which shouldn't be a big issue normally, but there's a hole right in the middle of it. The slicer will need to do a circular perimeter there, and it simply can't be done in the middle of a bridge without supports. All you'll get is a pile of spaghetti. The fix for this is a sacrificial layer. We just need to add a disc one layer thick at the bridge so it can go directly from one side to the other. Then it will provide a platform to build the wall of the through hole on. When the print is complete, you can just use an Allen key or perhaps a modeling knife to break or cut away the sacrificial disc and open up the hole. That'll be a lot less difficult post-processing than trying to disentangle a bunch of supports in a confined space. So I select the bottom of the threaded hole, New Sketch, Plain Face Attachment Mode. Bring in the opening for the hole as external geometry. Now create a circle centered on the origin and pull it out slowly until the auto constraints constrain it to the external geometry, which they do quite readily. Now close the sketch and extrude it to 0.2 millimeters, which is the layer height I'm going to be printing at. Select the bolt, then the new extrude, and fuse them. Name the fusion Pass Through Bolt 1. Move to a left view and hover over the various pieces in order to highlight them and make sure that everything is in the correct position. Rename the extrude Sacrificial Layer just so it'll be clear what it is when we're looking back on it later. So that's the bolt done. Now to the next part. The next step is a retaining nut. The bolt will be screwed through a hole in the dry box and the nut will be screwed on the other side to secure it from slipping or turning. There's really no need to reinvent anything here. Thinking about it for just a moment, the retaining nut looks exactly like a section out of the head of the pass-through bolt. So just create a plane, make it 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, big enough to cover the entire head. Close the dialog and come down into the data pane and put it into position. I'll look at it from the front and tilt it just a little so I can see what I'm doing. Set a formula on position.x, negative width divided by 2. And on position.y, set negative length divided by 2. Now it's centered on the origin. Set position.z to 2 millimeters, the height of the retaining nut. Now select the pass-through bolt and make a draft clone of it. Select the clone and the plane and go to Part, Split, Slice Apart. Open up the exploded slice and find that slice.2 is the part we want, so rename that to retaining nut. I'll go ahead and transform it to raise it up to more or less the place where it will be when the pass-through is installed, just to make everything clear. Of course, the compression fitting cannot possibly work without a compression washer, so let's design that now. Looking down the throat of the pass-through bolt, select the circle at the point where the flare meets the through hole and create a sub-object shape binder. Now select the circle at the top of the flare and create another sub-object shape binder. Now create a loft and add the tube shape binders. Create a solid and OK. 
This results in a plug that perfectly fills the flare. Originally I was going to use a thickness to complete the washer, but I think I'll get a better grip and more restricted airflow by just cutting out a cylinder. So select the top of the plug and create a sketch on the plane face. Draw a circle 4 mm in diameter on the origin. The diameter of the PTFE tube is about 3.91 mm, so this will give it a little room to slip in. Then as the washer is compressed, it should tighten down nicely. Select the sketch and extrude it to 10 mm. Check the reverse box so it will extrude down through the loft. Select the loft, the extruded cylinder, and cut. But now we need it to be possible to actually compress the washer and have it close on the PTFE tube. So select the top face of the washer and create a new sketch on the plane face. Create a rectangle with one side on the vertical axis. Set our vertical constraint of 1 mm. Select top and bottom points of that line, then the origin, and set them symmetrical. I'll stretch the rectangle a little bit so it crosses completely over the edge of the compression washer. There is no need to fully constrain the sketch since the width doesn't matter as long as it passes completely through the washer. Close the sketch and extrude it to, say, 10 mm. Precision is not called for here. We just have to get it through the whole thing. Check reverse so it extrudes down through the washer. Select the washer, then the extrusion, and Boolean cut. That takes a little notch out of the washer, giving it room to be compressed. I'm printing in PETG here, so it should compress well enough. If you want to use PLA, it might be a bit stiff. You can probably compensate by making the walls of the washer thinner, or making a little cutout on the other side halfway through the thickness, or print everything else in PLA in the washer and in PETG, or even TPU. As it stands, we're not going to get much compression since the top of the washer is level with the top of the seat. There's nothing for the compression nut to press on. So select the top face of the washer and create a sub-object shape binder. Now select that binder and extrude it one millimeter. This gives something for the compression nut to press on. To finish up, select the cut and the extrusion and fuse them. Rename the fusion to compression washer. That's it for this week but be sure to check back for part two where I'll complete the design and then use Prusa Slicer to help check it for errors. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.